Good morning. Um, so, yeah, I'm Brendan Young, and along with uh, my co authors Ali Cassini and uh, Ulla Ledra, we represent the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And uh, so, today I'm going to present uh, our comparison of project alliancing and lean construction. So, I'm a, I recently graduated my, from my master's in project management in, at Tentianu, and uh, I was studying alliancing and uh, that was brought about because in Norway coming up in the near future there are many very large infrastructure projects that are uh, on the horizon and the, the authorities have had a look at the situation and said that uh, decided that traditional contracting is not going to be suitable and so alliancing is one of the models that they're taking a look at. Um, so. I've been uh, bringing the experience from my home country in Australia uh, in alliancing to into Norway. And um, as part of that, we've, reckon, we've recognised that uh, there could be some benefits in uh, looking at combining lean construction with uh, the alliancing model. And um, I'll start with uh, one interesting uh, takeaway we got from the study of alliancing, was, and that was a uh, quote by a guy called Jim Ross. And for those of you who don't know Jim Ross, he's, he would be the equivalent of what Glenn Ballard is to lean construction, Jim Ross would be to alliancing. And uh, when we had a chat last year, he said the case in Australia where alliancing has been uh, very strong for the last 20 years, he said the problem was, was that academia was too slow to join the party. Um, the boom and bust of of alliancing uh, happened and academia caught on a bit too late, so they were studying it after the fact. Um, and he said a lot more benefit could have happened if, if academia was involved from the beginning. Um, and now what we're seeing here in, uh, in Europe is now there is a more and more uh, clients uh, introducing alliancing, uh, particularly so in Finland. They've been uh, They've been quite busy with that for the last 10 years. And uh, in the last couple of years, they've started introducing concepts, different concepts of uh, lean construction into their alliances. And so I guess that's happened in Finland, and that was industry-driven. As far as we're aware, we haven't uh, seen anything in academia yet. So we wanted to make sure we didn't miss the ball on this one and, uh, and get involved. So that's uh, led us to look at from a theoretical point of view, uh, the, the similarities between alliancing and, and lean construction, and then the next stage in the, in the research will be to follow the uh, practical outcomes of, of what is happening in Finland. Um, and it's also fitting that uh, we've recognised that there's still a little bit of, uh, of a gap in the lean construction literature when it comes to particularly alliancing out of the relational style contracts. So as I mentioned, we're looking at the similarities and differences between the two delivery methods and if there is potential for the two to learn from each other. Um, for those of you who aren't uh, too familiar with alliancing, I'll give a, a little bit of a quick uh, overview. So alliancing is a collaboration between the client, service providers and contractors where they share and manage the risks of the project together. All parties' expectations and commercial arrangements are aligned with the project outcomes and the project is driven by a best for project mindset, where all the parties either win together or lose together. The, the contract is designed around non-adversarial legal and commercial framework with all disputes and conflicts resolved from within the alliance. This type of project delivery can lead to improved project outcomes and value for money, in part due to the increased level of integration and cooperation between planners, design teams, contractors, and operators. As for lean construction, I'm sure you've had enough of that uh, over the last few days. But um, lean construction and project alliancing have both been recognised to be suitable for quick, uncertain, and complex projects. So immediately off the bat, they seem to have uh, some alignment. To uh, as a way to, uh, as a departure point for uh, our study, we looked at this uh, this triangle that represents um, the three 
domains of a project delivery method. Um, the three domains which should be in alignment and balanced to ensure that uh, the delivery method is coherent and optimal. Um, so we decided to, uh, to look at both aliancing and lean construction from, from this standpoint. For project aliancing, it, uh, it has been shown, well it has all the three domains in, in good alignment. Um, but it is particularly strong when it comes to organisation and commercial. So that seems to be where the, um, the large success has come from when it comes to aliancing. They've made uh, yeah, innovations in, in those areas. Where when it comes to operating system, it doesn't appear to be much different than traditional methods. They're using uh, standard project management techniques. And uh, when it comes to the literature, it seems that um, yeah, the literature often deals with what the aliancing wants to achieve, so whether it be value for money for the client, etc., and not how it's achieved on a day-to-day -day basis. It talks about how it's achieved on a strategic and overall basis, but not uh, not the nitty-gritty of day-to-day. Uh, -day. As for lean construction, well, it's not a standalone project delivery model in the sense that alliancing is, in, in the fact that it doesn't have uh, a standard set of commercial uh, arrangements. It's often combined with other, other methods, for example, like we did. But uh, as we know, lean construction is very strong when it comes to the organisation and operating system domains. And um, lean construction is also often known for the, um, the use of all the different tools in the day-to-day -day operation that makes up uh, a lot of the key benefits of, of lean construction. And so if we were to, conveniently for us, <laughs> we have A for aligning, strong in uh, organisation and commercial and, and L for lean construction, which is strong in organisation and operating system. So it seems only fitting that uh, we put them together to complete the triangle. Um, and that is largely brought about because there is, a, there is a big connection between the way this uh, organisation is structured for lean construction and aligning. They're very compatible in this area. They both try to drive uh, value for money for the customer and for the client. Um, and it's all about integration between all the parties, uh, designers, construct uh, contractors, uh, clients are all in it together from the very beginning. So uh, Alliancing and uh, Lean, they're, yeah, they're proposing a lot of, uh, of the same stuff. And so in that sense, Using that connection between the organisation arm, we can make a, a pretty good delivery model if we were to introduce a lean construction operating system into an alliance uh, model. So, yeah, that brings us to the end. As I said, that, yeah, very strong in the organisational domains, while each, the two different methods have differences when it comes to uh, commercial and operating system, but they each have their own strengths in that regard. So, due to this alignment, we think they would be very good in theory to, uh, to be combined. And we're interested to see how that, whether that theoretical alignment works in practice uh, in Finland. So the next step of the research is to follow along those projects and as more projects get finished and more data becomes available, we'll be able to take a, uh, a closer look. And uh, for those of you familiar with IPD, we think um, IPD and aliancing, despite a lot of similarities, we think that they are different enough to warrant such a, uh, an approach as this. And in terms of, if we were to just look at historically, I don't, I don't know if it's, uh, it could just be a coincidence, but uh, IPD is largely popular in, in America in the building uh, sector, whereas aliancing in Australia is very much infrastructure bridges and buildings projects. So on that standpoint, I think there's, there's room for both uh, in, the, in the client's uh, project delivery model toolbox. So yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Questions?